All right, hey guys. Um, so this is the video that I've been waiting to do for, uh, well, basically since the season started. Uh, you only get to do this window once in a while um, when it's full, and I've been kind of cataloging over the past several videos the progression of filling up this frame and uh, capping all the, the cells. There's only these little bottom cells that are left uh, uncapped and this is all completely full. Uh, I did the other day, and I didn't get a video of it, but I did um, record, or sorry, I did drain this one, um, and so I did not get a chance to record it, uh, but today I think I'm going to drain uh, this one and this one. I'm going to start with this one, though, to go ahead and get the video. You can see uh, they did not complete out these last little cells in the frame, but the entire thing uh, is full and it's all capped. It's just those last little cells. Let's see if I can get in there to show all the way to the edge. So it's literally that last cell. So I don't feel bad about going ahead and draining it. It's not a big deal. Um, but the reason I love doing this is you can really see uh, how non-intrusive uh, this process is to the bees, and it's just cool to watch. Um, so you can see kind of the honey's a little darker uh, underneath those cells, and we're going to see if it gets disturbed or how the bees react or if they're, you know, but just watch the whole process. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so as far as uh, our tools here, I've got my new half gallon jar. Um, now the last time I drew this, there was almost three quarters of a gallon. Uh, on the one frame, so I'm probably going to grab another uh, jar real quick before I start, because that's that's a smart idea. Uh, we've got our uh, flow hive key, and then we've got our little tube uh, to extract. So real quick, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to grab one more jar, maybe two, because I'll go ahead and do the other one too. And then um, yeah, we'll get it, we'll get it going. Okay, I am back. I have I actually grabbed one too many jars, but I have uh, four now half gallon jars. I'm only drawing two uh, of the of the frames, so at most I'll probably need three. Um, but I'm gonna pause again so I can unscrew this because I need two hands. All right, um, so we're gonna do this external uh, frame with the window. I've got my two tubes hooked up to my two frames, the one that's completely full and the one that's 99% full. Uh, so the only thing I'm missing, uh, let's see, third frame, take that cap out, is my little key here. So we're gonna, just so you can kind of see what happens, uh, we put the key in. I go, just personally, I go in about a third. Um, I'm gonna go in far enough so I can make sure we see it. Uh, when we turn, and then I'm going to turn the key. Okay, so it's been turned. I didn't notice any difference or any movement. Uh, but to go over here, we have the honey flowing. That's so coming out. And I got nothing over here. So with that, I'm going to push in a little further. So I've got my key about half. And we're going to look really closely. I still didn't see anything. So this is draining, like, solidly, so we can get the proverbial down the barrel shot, it's always fun. That's the honey. Clean honey. No filtration. 
No preservatives, no additives. Straight from the hive. Alright, so I can see it getting whiter. Like, it is draining. But even the surface isn't disturbed. Uh, Alright, let's do the whole thing. That's the entire... The entire frame is completely unlocked right now. And you cannot see any of it. <laughs> That's nuts. So this tube is like full capacity flowing. Um, it's adding and filling up quick. Pretty slick. Alright. Well, in order to be effective with our time, Look, I could care less. The surface isn't even disturbed. I really don't even understand. Like anybody who wants to give a hard time about, you know, this extraction method, I don't really. They're not disturbed at all. And we're taking a half gallon of honey and probably more so because that tube is full and we're getting we're getting up there seven minutes by the way maybe less from the time I actually turned the key and you can see these caps are getting whiter because the honey below the surface is draining away. But that's really it. These guys, as far as the landing board goes, they're still coming and going. I got foragers coming in. Call it a win. Didn't get much better than that. Jar's almost full, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my next one uh, in case I need to swap soon. You can see this tube is still completely full. But also just notice like how clean and clear the little bits that you see there are air bubbles. Like there's nothing in the honey. Pretty color. Alright. Uh, I'm going to double up on my efforts here and go ahead and crack the uh, second one. So that we can do both of those at the same time. A little ant on there.
No complaints there. Keep an eye on this, we're getting full. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this other jar. Swap out. I don't know if I'm dead. So I thought I was cool enough to do multiple things at once and I was incorrect. Uh, so I just swapped out the jar. I've got my uh, my half gallon right here that is full to the brim. And now we're starting another one and also uh, getting that one going. Go ahead and extend my key and do the next little section here. See the flow part will increase from when I turn the key. There it goes. So we're 10 minutes in, uh, a little over, and uh, again, the surface was not disturbed at all. Not even a little bit. So one of the questions I got asked before was, um, you know, how do the bees know if the surface isn't disturbed? How do they know that uh, there's no honey under there? Um, and I don't know this to be a fact. I read it, and I, I kind of, it makes sense to me, so I believe it. But um, what I was told was the way bees vibrate, uh, they can tell that from, a, I guess, the density uh, or how the, the cells maybe either vibrate more or less based off of honey being underneath it or not. Um, then they know that these are empty now, or they will. Um, and then what they'll do is immediately start removing all the wax capping. Um, they'll go through and take off all of this capping, uh, but the wax is all in the right place. So they may have to do a little bit of repair to get everything sealed um, and get it going again, uh, but they'll immediately start filling it once the capping is off, probably by tomorrow. Um, they'll start adding nectar back to these cells and using them. You can see um, on this one here, I emptied that frame uh, and this one. I emptied this frame and that frame um, four days ago. Um, and this one is full of bees, like you can see they're crawling in there and adding, they've added a little bit of nectar to that bottom, uh, but they're already filling it up. That's the one I'm draining right now. That's the one I drained the other day. That one they just haven't filled back up yet. And I've never drained that last one because uh, it's never been filled all the way. It probably looks exactly like this one does. Um, I just haven't done an inspection uh, today to confirm that, so I'm not going to draw it off. Um, this one is slowing down a little bit. Oh, we've attracted some fire ants though. Squishing. All this rain. They're not going up to the jars, they're just going uh, on this little tube. And as long as they don't climb down it, 
then we're good. Anyway, um, and these are sealed, so I don't have to worry about them actually getting into the honey or the hive. That one is also almost full. And we didn't get, I mean, this is definitely trailing down now. I don't want to stop it because it's got a decent um, amount kind of running into it. You can still see it dripping down all the way down the tube there. So, I'm going to let it uh, drizzle a little bit more. I can go ahead and uh, turn the cells the other way. See if we notice it when I close the cells. So I'm watching. This is the entire frame. Alright, they're closed again. <laughs> I didn't see anything. I'll have to watch back on the video and see if I notice. Uh, but that's closed. One stupid little... Fire ant. Got it. full and still drizzling. I'm going to see if I can uh, move this over in such a way that I can get uh, this one jar under both nozzles. So I don't trust myself with uh, holding a jar of honey, moving a jar of honey, and shifting a jar of honey so as not to drip it. So I'm going to have to pause. Okay. <clears throat> so I got it positioned. Uh, precariously between the two streams, but they are both streaming into. So we're using a little uh, fluid dynamics to uh, make sure that they're both trailing. See, it's almost bowing in a little bit, but it's following the other. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> still, I mean, that's the extra more than a half a gallon that's coming out um, from each of them. So we're adding a decent amount. I've closed both of them, so this is just what's dripping down residually from what was open. Um, this is again closed and not disturbed. Yeah. So that's the whole process. Oh, I got some drips going on so they're not following the stream anymore. That one's good. Uh, I have to go ahead and... Sorry, my filming's terrible. I'm going to just uh, pull that let it go through the bottom. I'm going to set this over there for the bees to take and close my cap again so that it doesn't continue to flow out. And I can shift this over. A little bit of spillage. Take that for myself. Pretty tasty. Alright. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed. That's the whole process, and I've got uh, about a gallon and a quarter, maybe. So, good honey harvest season so far this year. Um, and then I will 
likely be extracting the flow hive two uh, in another maybe two or three weeks. Uh, it's almost completely full. So just keep an eye on it. You guys have a good day.